Have you noticed that the world's kind of a mess these days? You know, if you look at the news, or read a newspaper, if anybody does that still, or look at the internet, listen to the radio, there's a lot of bad things going on, at least from the perspective of Christians. It's a rough world that we live in. There's a lot of discouragement, frustration, confusion, stress. It's kind of the reason why I don't watch the news anymore. <clears throat> I don't know if you've come to that conclusion, but uh, it's, it's helped me. I, I believe it. But, but you, know, you still have to be aware of what's going on. And we are. It seemed like it really started three years ago when, when COVID hit. If you remember three years ago, we weren't even able to come to worship for a while. In their jobs, some might have even lost jobs. I was quarantined, couldn't go see customers. It was, it was a strange time. We, we, the world is it's not what it was when I grew up. And so <clears throat> three years ago when, when that quarantine was going on, I started thinking about, well, what does the Bible have to say about these sorts of things? And I knew the answer to that question, and yet you dig deep and the Bible has a lot to say. And that's really the, the beginning of what I want to talk about this morning. And what's going on today just makes it even more current, I guess. I don't know what the right word is. But what I came up with was I looked at certain passages. And I called this the 10 passages of encouragement. And as we get into this, yeah, 10 passages is, is a lot. We won't spend a lot of time on each one because you don't really need to. Uh, the, the Lord's word is, is pretty clear. But I want to make a couple of points before we actually get into them. One is that when we look at these passages, which I'm calling passages of encouragement, they're not a suggestion that things are going to get easier. I have no idea what's going to happen, and no, not, nor does anybody here. God knows. But um, these passages are designed to help us know how to think as we look at these things that are going on around us. You know, as I was thinking about that, I thought about how do you think those first century Christians who lived in Jerusalem felt when they were being surrounded by the Roman army and they knew what was going to happen. In fact, Jesus had warned them and they knew what to do. The Christians knew what to do. They, meant they knew to get out of town. But did they really want to? I mean, their friends were there in Jerusalem, their family but they did. And I wonder now, you know, we, there, there's things that are going on. I don't know what God's plan is for us, for this, for this country, for the world. I don't know. But, but we need to know what the Bible says because, you know, evil will never go away. It's always going to be there. The question is, how are we going to deal with it? And that's where the scriptures help us. They give us direction. They give us a way to think, a way to deal with turmoil. So these 10 passages I've chosen are the ones that I chose. You know, I was thinking about that too. If Sean took this idea, he might choose 10 totally different passages. Brian might do the same. There's tons of passages that we can look at that will give us encouragement. The passages that they choose will get us to the same place that I want to get us to uh, this morning. So keep that in mind. I've chosen 10 passages. That's all that means. So let's take a look. The first one I chose is one that probably would show up on most lists. This one comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Paul, writing to the Philippian church, says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now think for a minute. The, the letter to the Philippian church, written by Paul, you know where Paul was when he wrote this letter? He was in prison. <laughs> These words come from a guy in prison. And he's encouraging them. And remember the Philippians. When, when, when Paul was first in Philippi, what happened to him? Well, him and Silas got thrown in jail. 
And you know what they were doing in jail? They were praying and singing hymns. And in fact, they converted the Philippian jailer and his whole family. So that's what's behind, what's in the, in the behind this particular passage. And so Paul is saying, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. That's an amazing statement when you realize that this is coming from a guy in prison to people who have seen the trouble that Paul endured while he was in their town. Be anxious for nothing. Paul's talking to us too. When you're surrounded by tor turmoil, we don't need to be worrisome. But there's a reason why. You know why? Well, Paul says, because by prayer and supplic supplication with thanksgiving, we need to be talking to God. When we're talking to God, when we're praying, guess what? We're not focused on what's going on on Fox News. Think about that. The more we pray, and the Bible says that we're to be a prayerful people, right? Pray without ceasing. When we're praying, when we're of a prayerful mind, the things that are going on around us aren't as troublesome. Paul says, be anxious for nothing, pray to God. And then he says, because of that, you have peace. With all that going on around us, you have peace. You know what he's really saying? And, I, and you're going to see this in every scripture that we talk about. You keep your focus on Jesus. You keep your focus on God. And you'll be able to deal with it. If you don't, you're going to be a mess. You're going to be stressed. I would be. I am when I don't do what Paul says. It's important. That's, how we, that's, that's step one in this lesson of how to deal with, with, with these things. Jesus has something to say about this kind of thing. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 6, verses 31 to 34, and this is a place that I've gone many times over the years, Jesus is focusing on physical things here. But Jesus says, do not worry. Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus knows that we have physical needs. God knows we have physical needs. Don't worry about it. I got your back, is what Jesus is saying. What God is telling us, do not worry. Why? Well, the Lord knows what we need. Have you, we've heard the thing about wants and needs, right? You know, I kind of want to have a house on the side of Camelback Mountain. Probably not going to happen, because I don't need it. But I do need something to eat. I need a place to sleep. I need some clothes to wear. God's going to take care of those things. He knows. When we pray to him and, and ask for things, he knows we need it. He needs, needs to hear our conversation with him. He, he wants to know that we care, that we're, we're focused on him. But Jesus does throw in the condition, doesn't he? He says to seek first the kingdom of God, and these things will be taken care of. And you know, I don't know if you've ever done this, but it, 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 depending on how long you've been alive, you know, if, you just, if, you, if you're a youngster, you probably don't have a lot of... Um, context but I've looked back over my life you know when when I wasn't seeking first when I wasn't thinking that way things weren't going this smooth it didn't when I have it didn't matter what I had it was okay I can remember as a young family two little kids we get a paycheck we we set aside for the Lord first budget everything else Five bucks. We had five bucks left that we had to live on for two weeks. And we made it. And in fact, those were good days. He takes care of us. Don't worry. He'll take care of us. Don't, don't worry. Here's another scripture that dates back to the old days. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 6 and 7. This is Moses talking to the Israelites before they cross the Jordan River and go into the promised land to take it over. 
Moses says, be strong and courageous. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid or dismayed. You know, first of all, it's kind of amazing Moses had to say that. I mean, think about it. The, the Israelites, they were freed from slavery in Egypt. God made that happen. Um, during the time that they wandered in the wilderness for those 40 years, God provided them manna, he provided them food, he provided them water. He helped them through that entire time. But Moses had to remind them, God's with you. Which basically is saying, you need to be with God, and he'll take care of you. And you know, when they crossed that, that uh, Jordan, they went to Jericho, and those walls fell down. It, it, it worked fine. The only time that the Israels had trouble was when sin was in the camp. And then it didn't go so well. In fact, it went terrible. If, God's on, if we're on God's side, we're going to be okay. Don't be afraid. That's what the scriptures tell us. Keep your focus on God. Keep your focus on Jesus. This passage is from the Psalms, Psalm 27, verse 1. And here we have David talking and giving us a, 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 a view of his mind, his attitude, the attitude that he had toward God. David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, think about that. David is the guy who looked at the Israelite army and said, what are you guys doing? They were afraid of this giant down there and the, the Philistine army. And David says, God's on our side. Why are you worried about these guys? And so he went down there into the valley against a giant with, with armor and a huge sword and all that. All he had was a sling and some stones. And the giant died. David says, whom shall I fear? I've got the Lord on my side. I'm on the side of the Lord. I'm not afraid. Isn't that how we should look at things when we see things around us that don't seem right? We've got to, we've got to focus on the Lord. Keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep our focus on Jesus. 2 Timothy, verses 1 through 7. This is... Paul, again, talking to Timothy, a young man, a young preacher, he's given him some direction. And he says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, think about this. Timothy has been around Paul a lot. He knows Paul's history. He knows the things that Paul has gone through. I mean, he's been stoned. He's been whipped and, and beaten and, and left for dead. And yet he kept getting up and he kept going on. He was in prison. He kept going on. He never quit. And so you can, you can almost see Paul, okay, Timothy, you know, you might deal with the same things I'm going to be dealing with. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. In fact, God gives us a spirit of power. At that time, there was, there was some power involved with the apostles and people they laid, laid hands on. But even today, we've got power. We've got the power of God behind us. The scriptures tell us so. We have to have faith in that. We have to believe in it. We've got the love of God. We understand it. We've got the scriptures that tell us about that. We've got the sound mind that comes from understanding the scriptures. God giving us his mind and telling us how to live. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. He gives us that spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 6. The Hebrew writer there addresses the fear of man and their intimidation. The scripture says, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? You know what? This is actually a quotation of David from the Psalms, the 118th Psalm. David says, the Lord is for me. What can man do to me? 
And I think that's important because when we look around and who knows what the future holds, but there are places in the world where men tried to kill Christians. I don't know if that could happen here. Could. But how do we look at that? We must not fear. We understand that man can do things to us. They can try to intimidate us. They can, they can hurt us physically. But they can't do anything to me. In fact, if you take Paul's attitude to live as Christ and to die as gain, if man does something to us, that's actually an advantage. And that's hard to, that's hard to accept as, as human beings. But it's true. What can man do to me? Sometimes we have to think that way. Here's an interesting one that I, that I threw in just because of the context. Psalm 46, verse 1. This is a psalm from the sons of Korah, and they talk about fear again. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Think of that. I've never been in an earthquake, but if, 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 if things are to the point where what around, is going on around us, or actually the earth is quaking and mountains are falling into the sea, I, I kind of think I might be afraid. But, but the sons of Korah are saying, stay strong. Keep your, keep your focus on the Lord. You don't have to be afraid of all that. Counterintuitive, but it's true. And we have to keep our focus on Jesus, to keep our focus on God, and we'll make it through those kinds of situations. Jesus speaking again, Matthew 10 and 28. Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Now. All through here, you've noticed a trend that there's a lot of talk about fear, right? Jesus says there is something to fear. It's the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That would be God. And the, the, the scriptures talk a lot about that fear. It's, it's throughout the scriptures. And I just went to the Proverbs, you know, the... Um, the wisdom chapter, okay? A lot of wisdom there. And, and look what, what Proverbs has to say. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You heard that one before? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance in the evil way. Proverbs 8 and verse 13. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Proverbs 15 and verse 16. By the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. Proverbs 16 and verse 6. This is a, this is a trend throughout the scriptures. We need to have our fear placed in the right place, and that's the fear of God because he's the one who has our, our eternal destiny in his hands. Man can only take our life, and he has. Take a look at what happened to Jesus. Jesus was put to death on the cross. Man thought, hey, we win. No, <laughs> that was the beginning of man's greatest defeat because Jesus came back to life, and he, by doing that, gave us all hope for an eternity with him. Man can only control that side of things. God can put us in eternal uh, destruction. And that's the one to fear. We need to keep our focus on Jesus. We need to keep our focus on God, no matter what's going on around us. Did I skip one? Yeah, okay. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Now here, God is actually speaking through the prophet Isaiah. God says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
So here we have the counterintuitive truth about understanding fear. We're, we're told not to fear. God says, don't fear, I'm with you, which is basically saying, don't fear, be with me, and you don't have to fear. Again, the scriptures are telling us, keep your focus, keep your focus on God. And finally, the, the, the 10th passage I wanted to look at here this morning is, is John chapter 14 and verse 27. And here we have an assurance from Jesus. Now, the context here, Jesus is talking to his apostles shortly before his crucifixion. His crucifixion. You know, he's going to hang on a cross. He's going to die. But he's telling the apostles, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now we know what happened when, when Jesus was, was hung on that cross. Some of those, those apostles really struggled with that. But when Jesus came back from the dead, the light went on, didn't it? They knew. And they had the peace to be able to go out and do what they did. Uh, when they were sent into the world. Jesus says, peace, I live with you, leave with you, and yet he's surrounded by turmoil. He's going to be hung on a cross in just, just a, a, a few hours. The peace that Jesus is talking about is nothing like what the world identifies as peace. You know, we, we know peace in some camping. <laughs> that's peace for me. Uh, that's, that's not what Jesus is talking about when he says, I leave you with peace. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. So these scriptures probably don't sound like, well, there's not a whole lot of encouragement there. We, we might have to go through some things. Well, if it comes down to that, we need these scriptures to help us get through that. And, and that's my concern for me. And I'm trying to share that with you. Now, one thing that Sean always does, and I agree with it, is to look at applications. And here are the applications that I see from the things that we've talked about this morning. Did you get the message? Jesus doesn't want us to worry. That's important. You know, we may face difficult times, but don't worry. Keep your focus on God, on Jesus. Pray. When things are going on that, that, that trouble you, go to God in prayer. That's where we need to be going. We need to go to the scriptures. We need to pray. Jesus, God needs to know that we're thinking of him and that we're communicating with him. When we are on God's side, when we follow Jesus, we should be courageous. In fact, we need to be courageous. That's when courage steps up because the tendency may be to kind of shrink back and, and stress out about it. We need to be courageous. We need to fear God and not fear men. That will help us uh, in terms of, of uh, dealing with the things of, of this life. And the one thing that I didn't talk about, but is the foundation for everything that I've talked about so far th this morning. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. That's the foundation. That's what leads us. That's what it gets, it gets us there. Basically he's saying, focus on me. Focus on God. Focus on Jesus. That's how we get through difficult times, get through turmoil. It's really important that we have these kinds of things uh, focused on in our life. So those are the 10 passages. I don't know what the future holds. Only God knows what that is. Um, things could kind of straighten up and everything will be rosy for the rest of our lives. Could. Or we may fa face great upheaval and persecution. Or maybe somewhere in the middle. I don't know. Only God knows the answer to that question. And I know he knows where things are headed. The key, if there's only one thing you remember from, from all these uh, passages and the things that, 
that I've tried to communicate with you this morning, the one thing that you need to remember is to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. If we do that, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. This lesson hasn't been really designed to, to focus on first principle things, but there may be somebody here who is ready to take that step to become a Christian, to, to be baptized for the remission of your sins. We have water here. The scripture says, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you have that opportunity now. If there's, there may be somebody here that is just is going through, is stressed out about things in your life and you need the prayers and the, 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 uh, the help of, uh, of the congregation. You can let that be known too this morning. If, if you need to respond to the invitation, come forward now as we stand and sing the invitation song.